That is... What? You are going to live life. Today's an exciting day. You know that I'm interested in finding the optimal, the ultimate laptop for myself. It has changed so much over the years. At some point, I kind of zeroed in, I targeted my focus on ThinkPad products because I like a nice and substantial keyboard, but I don't want a super heavy, fat laptop. That would typically be what would include a nice keyboard. I had the X1 Carbon many generations, the X1 Extreme. Today, I have in front of me the latest innovation in the ThinkPad lineup. This is the lightest ThinkPad they have ever done. It is 1.99 pounds. It's the type of ThinkPad, it's the type of laptop that's going to encourage you to move it around just because it is so light. They've also used materials here to give it a certain amount of durability. There's carbon in here. I'm hoping the keyboard feels as good as the previous ones have. It's also got Thunderbolt on it, which you guys know how I feel about Thunderbolt, specifically Thunderbolt 4. The latest generation Intel chips are inside of it, depending on how you configure it. And supposedly it's got over 17 hours of battery life. It is the X1 Nano. Lots of exciting things. I don't know what it says on the box. It doesn't even. It's so new, so recently launched. This could very well be my next laptop, my next go-to. Let me pull it out. Oh, that is tiny. This is a, oh my, even with the foam on it. Holy. Wow. What? It feels like nothing. It feels like I'm holding an iPad but I'm holding a, a whole entire Windows laptop. That is incredible. All right, I don't wanna give it all away. I'm gonna just look at the other items in the box. I'm gonna lay that down for a quick moment. It's pretty bare bones. So as mentioned, it's a 65 watt power brick. You can use the Type-C power brick from Lenovo that's included in the box, but it's a USB-C chargeable laptop. So if you have one of those fast charge power bricks that maybe you use with your phone, uh, one of those GAN chargers, you could use that as well and get something even tinier than this, although the included charger is pretty tiny as well in here. Let's look around the device. Over here on the side, you see those two Thunderbolt 4 ports that I mentioned and a headphone jack. That's actually all you're gonna get as far as the interfacing is concerned. Bit of a drawback compared to the other models, but a consequence of getting that almost impossible size here at 1.9. Let me put this in perspective for you. 1.99 pounds. The regular X1 Carbon, which is already ultra portable, is 2.4 pounds. The competing product from Dell is around 2.6 pounds. It's almost a half pound lighter than everything it's competing with. It's obviously lighter than the MacBook equivalent. It's just, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty wild. You can tell that I'm pumped up. Apparently they worked on the audio as well, which is a big consideration for me. I, I can't stand the tinny audio on certain laptops. Let me open this up, wow. Just like all the other ThinkPads, an incredible range on the hinge. Would you look at that? It can basically fold flat. You have, of course, a little cover for the front facing camera, which is nice from a privacy perspective. More speaker grills up here. A large precision trackpad, fingerprint unlock, plus the mechanical buttons, which are a nice little extra to have. I usually map them to just be uh, extra buttons as opposed to necessarily having them left right center button, and of course, you gotta have the little, you gotta, what is the name of this nub? You gotta have your nub, all right? Because it's a ThinkPad after all. That is, that's like a cutting board. It's so thin and light, my goodness. Let me tickle these keys just a touch, and yes, the quick brown fox is alive and well, the way they shape the keys. Now this one's a little bit smaller than what I'm used to on X1 Carbon, but barely. You are going to live life with this keyboard and no moment in time would you be sitting there saying, I gotta get my full size keyboard out because this, it really tricks your brain 
you're still getting key travel, which is so unusual on laptops in 2020. You just feel right at home when you use a keyboard like this one. And of course, you also have this really stealth-like design, matte black finish, which is almost has like a rubberized feel to it. Plus some call features in the quick settings up along top. That's because you can configure this model with 5G as well and be completely off the grid or away from Wi-Fi, but still connected. Let me go ahead and power this up. The power switch is over on the side. Wow. That was Nintendo-like on the startup. 11th generation up to Core i7 processors, Windows 10 Pro, obviously, Intel Iris graphics, so integrated graphics. You can configure the display for touch or non-touch. They're both Dolby Vision, whether you go with the touch screen or the non-touch screen, and 450 nits of brightness, which I track this stuff. I like to use a laptop next to the window, so I care about the brightness level. 450 is on the higher end of the spectrum, certainly, especially for such a thin display with such a tiny little bezel. You can get up to 16 gigs of memory on here, up to one terabyte of PCIe SSD storage. As mentioned, up to 17.3 hours of battery life. That's very specific, Lenovo, 17.3. Very interested in the Dolby Atmos speaker system. Can they deliver on a package that's so thin and light? Can you really fit speakers in there? If they're half decent, I'll be okay with it in exchange for the portability. Wi-Fi 6 is built in, and as mentioned, 5G as well. Uh, for connection via SIM card, I suppose. Or maybe it has an eSIM, because I don't see a SIM tray over there. And yeah, that's about it. All right, so we are booted up. It is a matte finish on the display. Let me get those nits going. Sometimes with a matte display, you don't really fully appreciate how bright it is because it doesn't have that extra punch that some gloss gives you. However, what you do get is a, a sort of more uniform experience because you have less reflections. I'm a fan of a matte display. I'll take a matte display, no problem. On the top lid here, there are four separate microphones. They took the video conferencing potential very seriously. Obviously, they're targeting a work clientele. And another nice little touch on the ThinkPad logo over here, we have the red light indicating that it's turned on above the eye inside of the logo. Now what's unique about this laptop is that even though it's a 13 inch laptop, because they went with a 16 by 10 display, top of the screen is actually the same height as a 16 by nine, 14 inch laptop. So you're only losing some width. Now for productivity tasks, that's not really a big deal. That audience tends to like a slightly taller display because of the type of content that you view, like say websites, for example, which are typically a little taller than video content. That is the most aggravating sound in the world. Da -da -da -da. And it always like crackles the speaker a little bit. <laughs> Because they didn't tune it correctly. Like I'm gonna, off the show full resolution, the 4K playing. Will do has his very own colorway of later case, 4A later case. Super. This laptop is so I light. Can I can hold it out uh, here. I can't tell you the for days. quantities that are left because so many of them have to. You have uh, four separate colorway. speakers. So you have speakers here, which are going to give you uh, sort of more detail for dialogue, firing into your left and right ear, and then. For a little extra bass, these two guys are gonna hit the table. And honestly, for a 1.99 pound laptop, I'm gonna take that sound. I'm gonna say it right now. This sounds better than some laptops I've tested that are quite a bit bigger. So they did think about sound and I appreciate that because for a while, Lenovo wasn't all that interested in delivering too much sound to you because they thought, okay, this is a work device. Take it easy. You don't have to be watching these videos very loud, but that feature mattered to me. So I believe they have kind of rectified the situation on that front with this laptop. Windows Hello, tons of options for unlock. I typically will have a couple different ones enabled. So the fingerprint scanner is one, but so is the face unlock in Windows Hello. That one is super quick. If I ever switch back to a Mac laptop, I often miss that. I'm gonna go ahead and try the fingerprint on this one. Here we go. Now Lenovo has put the fingerprint scanner in this position for a while. 
and it's looking for the scan, and you're in. My favorite setup for these is a, is a dynamic one where I have multiple options for unlock and then just whichever one kicks in first, I'll just go with. If I hit enter and it happens to see my face, okay, perfect. If I'm kind of off angle or something and I use the fingerprint, perfect. I, I just like having more than one option for unlock. I use it on a regular basis. I'm curious about the front facing camera because video conferencing has become such a huge part of our lives in 2020 and this four microphone array. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch a front camera recording. So here we are. This is just the camera app within Windows. Oh, it's this got some sort of a noise canceling thing Windows. going on. I can tell it's dipping the ambient noise uh, in between words. One of the reasons you have these multi microphone arrays is often for a sort of noise cancellation functionality in order to determine what frequency it, the background noise is and to kind of attempt to get rid of it. We're gonna be testing out the microphones on the laptop as well as the front facing camera for video conferencing purposes, regardless of which conferencing app you choose to use, you might be curious about how you're gonna come through on uh, this laptop if you happen to pick it up. So it's not the most tremendous resolution. I don't know what they list it as. It must be maybe 720p. They don't even list it on here. Oh, it's an HD camera with IR as well and think shutter. That's the thing that allows you to cover it up with an actual mechanical switch and cover. Uh, it looks like 720p to me. So don't get your expectations too high, but it should work for your various video conferencing. And it's a, it's a good location. You know, some super thin and light laptops have had to move the location of the front camera, but this is where it should be up on the top of the display. The Quick Brown Fox, the Quick. One of the things about a laptop keyboard is it's not just the travel in the keys, but it's also whether or not the whole thing flexes as those keys travel downwards. And often when you're dealing with something so lightweight, it's tough for them to figure out a way in which to deter the chassis from bending down. One of the ways that Lenovo does it with the ThinkPad lineup is they use some exotic materials like carbon and magnesium and a variety of high-end materials that are super lightweight, but also stiff and strong. And so as you can see, even though this thing is not even two pounds, as I quick brown fox it, there's no, I'm not completely, I mean, it, there's a little bit of flex in there, but it's nothing substantial. Now you also know that I'm a huge fan of Thunderbolt, seeing as how with a thin and light laptop, sometimes it's not gonna be the most uh, overpowering thing from a graphics performance perspective, but when you have Thunderbolt 4, my goodness, you got a lot of potential expandability with tremendous throughput. You could get crazy and do some eGPU stuff if you wanted. You could get crazy and do some capture stuff if you wanted. So there's flexibility once you have that port. And believe it or not, it's kind of a tough port to find every time on every laptop you might happen to be looking at. This is way heavier. All right, I grabbed some comparables because I, this is just, it's so interesting to me sort of what the ultimate computing device is gonna be just in my life. And it's gonna be different for everyone depending on what you do on the day-to-day. -day. For me, the day-to-day, -day, there's email. There's, of course, I gotta get in the Slack and see what everybody's talking about. There's some YouTube. There's a lot of tagging different things and uploading things. I'm just interacting with the keyboard a lot. I need a nice screen and I want something ultra portable and relatively durable. So now you know why I'm such a fan of these things. But for some people that are in this market, they're gonna cross shop it against something like this, which is a MacBook Air. But funny enough, the MacBook Air actually feels heavy next to this. It's a whole pound heavier. How crazy is that? It's a 13 inch laptop, it's a whole pound heavier. Now granted, it's different materials. This is a, a using an aluminum body, so it kind of has a its very own luxurious feel to it. And there's a much bigger bezel around the display. It's a glossy display. The keyboard is a totally different type of setup as well, bigger trackpad. They're targeted maybe at different individuals, but I could imagine that cross shop. And in that case, if you're looking for an ultra portable, I have to imagine you're looking at that weight. If it's gonna go in a backpack, if it's gonna move around with you, an extra pound 
it's, uh, you know, this is two thirds the weight of this. It's quite substantial. And then the other crazy thing is once you get into an iPad setup, this is a 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the keyboard attachment. And obviously this is a more versatile device because I can pull this off, put it back on and uh, have the magic keyboard attachment to do my typing and touch screen and I could have a pen with it as well. But it's kind of amazing how heavy this all gets when you put it all together. So the iPad on its own <laughs> is 1.4 pounds. This is 1.4 pounds, this is 1.99 pounds. So the difference between this and the MacBook Air is a pound. The difference between these two items is about half a pound, 0.6 pounds. Put that in perspective, because because you can't feel this. That's insane. Imagine it's slightly heavier than a 12.9 inch iPad Pro with an entire keyboard. And then if you want to attach the iPad Pro to the keyboard and have a all-in-one solution for when you need to do some typing, let me see how much the Magic Keyboard weighs. MacBook Air is 1290 grams and this combined weight is 1351. So this package is more than a pound heavier than this one. And you end up with a 13 inch display, a keyboard. In this case, you can also get a touch display. I realize they're very different, targeted differently. This is like sort of a mobile OS with the potential for pen input and so on. So it's gonna depend on what type of work you do. But for me, that's just staggering what they were able to pack in here at this weight. And I'm very excited to use this more extensively. You're gonna see it on my desk downstairs on the Lou Later set. And I'm gonna be going back and forth with this. This will be the daily. And I'm gonna hardly notice that I'm carrying it. And also, last thing I just noticed, there's the SIM card tray. So yeah, crazy, 1.99 pound ThinkPad X1 Nano. Look at this, Look, feel these two. This thing feels like a tank. Oh, that's ridiculous. Oh my God. I, I feel know. Like I'm throwing this thing. I know, it's crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, you really feel like you want to get up and move, go to a different spot. Well, you just feel like you go, can. Go to the kitchen, go to the. Especially with that little charger. You could do anything. You could go anywhere. You could do anything.